welcome to today's tutorial, moving the mould from my man cave. So you can see the equipment list there and I'll also pop it below. I'm going to show you two sizes and there's going to be one size which I'm going to use on the man cave cake, which is a new tutorial you can buy on my website. And I'm also going to show you from my book as well. So when you see the green one, this is for the cake. So little tiny one gram pieces per foot. Can you see how teeny tiny they are? So four toes for the really, really tiny one. And you're going to cut out little wedge shapes. There we are. Can you see the wedge and scrape it away with your scalpel? Make sure you don't cut yourself. I only ever touch the flat side of the blade, never ever the point. And it was a really hot, sticky day when I recorded this. Can you see? Now, Sarcino has got uh, cocoa butter in it. So you're going to get that lovely chocolatey feel. But on hot days, it's going to be stickier. So tiny. Let's look at the big one. This will make it much easier for you. And you can neaten as you go as well. So don't despair if you make a really mess on one toe. Just cut it again. And if it's really bad, roll it back up into a ball and start from the beginning. So five little toes. Make sure they're roughly even because the next thing we do is going to make it look much neater. And it'll look like the one at the bottom. So this is the Cherot hard point tool and it's a firm silicon tool and I'm dragging it between the toes. And that's going to give the lovely webbing effect. I could put toenails on with a Dresden just like that one, facing down, or I can use that hard point tool again and just give them a little press. I think it depends on the size of the paw that you're making. Obviously, we need two. There we go. You can see, and they're lovely wiggly toes as well. I'm going to curve it over because this is going to be slightly in a molehill with the little claws curving over the top. Now, again, to make the head, I'm going to show you with two sizes. So 10 grams for the small head. And then we're going to use 22 and a half grams for the larger head. And this is still only a small mole, even the large size. So you're going to roll that ball, um, moving your paste around, giving it a good old stretch until it feels like plasticine. And then you're going to smooth it into an oval and flatten it onto your board because the back of the head needs to be flat. Can you see when I'm pinching, I'm not using my fingertips. I'm using the sides of my fingers. I'll show you again on the little one. And I'm rotating the little one because it's harder to grip the edge of that paste without squashing it. So about the color on my nails. I was teaching just before class. So you want to pinch on the shoulders. Now, the one on the cake I'm doing is not going to have shoulders. But I'm still going to show you because you might want them on yours. So rolling around the narrow end of the Dresden, which is called the veining tool. Smooth it a little bit. But on the little one, you can see that I've done exactly the same there, but I'm just going to cut off the excess. But we'll do the mouth first. So this is a number 11 blade scalpel, which basically means it's quite a smooth, straight blade. Got to give him a smile and pull the mouth down and just... Gently blunt the lower jaw so it pushes back in a little bit. See, it looks much cuter. Now have a good look at a close-up on the internet of a picture of a, no a mole's nose because it does look like a flower. So it's like they've got too many nostrils or something, but it's just really so cute. And I also decided that you can just keep the tools minimum on this. So that's the eyebrow area using the back of the tool and then a point for the inside. So I love to add texture to my animals and we're just going to use a good old scalpel to do this. Now think of the centre of that nose as the centre of the clock and that means all the lines go at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock and so on. And it's always starting from the nose and going backwards or sideways or underneath. I know this circle's going backwards, but you kind of get the idea. Keep on going all the way around, including the back of the head as well. So you want to go down the back of the head, like on this one. But this is where I mentioned I wanted to trim off his shoulders. 
just cutting straight down but you're obviously going to neaten him up a little bit I basically looked at the size of the molehill I wanted to create and then I realized that to go with the story for the particular cake that I was doing there's not really going to be a whole mole peeking out so I've just pulled a little bit of the paste down as well so it gives me something to fix inside the molehill but you can use him as a flat piece because in my book I do really delicious chocolate biscuit cakes and they are his molehill and a little Mervyn sits on the top so have a little look at the picture at the start and you'll see that and of course if you've got my book then you've got the instructions as well Still slicing around the back and I'm making sure I don't miss any bits but even when you think it's dry you can always go back and just give it a little tidy up here and there or add more texture there we go so now we need to add some color now I wanted to dust with the color rather than painting because I think it gives you a lovely sort of mixture of colors it doesn't sit in there too hard and the colours were at the start, but I'm using some Saracino pink. You can use any dusky pink that you've got. So that goes on the nose and inside the mouth. And we're going to be over dusting these as well. And ignore the yellow, as I mentioned. That's because it's whole cake project. So I was just about to do something else in this lesson as well. <laughs> so the pores, they need to have a little bit of pink on them as well. Now you could have started with the Saracino skin tone uh, actual paste but I like to start with white because then I can make the skin tone uneven so it can be slightly pale and slightly dark in places and patchy because he's been playing around under the earth now sorry the violet looks so dark on here so it was in the light box because it was night time when I did this so I'm going just on the edges of the claws and I'm going between the bones on the paws as well because it just adds some nice texture you could go in there with brown or with black as if he's been playing in the earth as well. But I wanted to keep some lightness to the pores, so I tried to keep it mostly the lovely purpley colour. You can also mix your pink with your violet and then your violet with your black, so you can sort of gradually change the shades as well. Now you'll see why I don't need to actually go in there. Oh, I'm adding a little bit of purple, by the way. You'll see why I don't need to just paint this. Watch the amount of colour you get from this. Now, if you want the colour to skip over the top, go across the fur. But as you can see, I really wanted to get a nice deep colour on this one. But don't panic, it's not going to look flat. In real life, this has got a really, real nice amount of texture on there. But I'm going to show you in a minute what to do if you think you've gone too dark. Leave the nose slightly lighter, but they do still have really cute, slightly dirty snouts as well. But I'm leaving it lighter there, you can see, and it'll gradually get darker. This is a nice filbert brush as well. So all that means is it's nice and round on the edge. Now he hasn't got any eyes in there at the moment either. Pop a tiny bit inside just the line that you cut. You'll still be able to see a little bit of the pink. And then underneath his nose, I've put a little bit of the black as well. But I do go in and add some extra stuff now. So just watch what we do in a second. Look how black you can get there. So if you slice in with the scalpel, what will happen is, because I've just made him, the first sits down too flat. So by slicing back in in a few more places, when I then go and dust it in, it'll be slightly lighter and slightly patchier because I don't want him to be completely solidly one colour. So if you've got to do something quickly, don't be afraid to get back in there with our scalpel while the paste is still wet because this was literally all done in one evening. There we are. See, so now it looks slightly patchy. You'll see us so much better on the final picture. Got to boop the nose with some more pink, haven't you? And I wanted to add a little bit of violet in patches as well. So it's not too flat looking. But you can also see there's a little bit of white on his, on his lower jaw as well. Just make sure you've caught everywhere you need to get. But like I said, don't forget you can go back in for finishing touches later on. And a little bit more black on the claws to finish.
Now I did put really tiny, tiny one millimeter balls of black paste in the eyes, but I don't know why I didn't record this, but you can just see a little snippet of the man cave cake there. Now you can glue inside those holes if you think you need to. But what I find is Saracino sits really well. I did put a bit of glue to fix the head in though, so just edible glue. Ah, oh, look, there he is. Neaten up those edges with a bit of black dust just in case you wipe some off. And we'll zoom on in for a close-up. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you soon. Take care.